Chris Cody, I need to commiserate with you for a second over the producing of your father. The Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I, 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 I want I, I need to explore some of what's happening here because I've been dealing, obviously, most recently with a lot of mortality stuff, and my parents, later in life, they become toddlers, and they become, a, a, they become people that you are caring for, even if they're independent, stubbornly inde independent. Like, you cannot... They took care of you, Dan, just so you I, know. I know, but your dad, too. You know, yeah. you're, I'm not the only one living this right now. You understand <laughs> what it's like after the death of your mother yes. to to chase a toddler around through his old age because they become infants again. Your dad, Greg Cody, has been that infant for the entire time he's been under the care of his wife. He is a child. And now, it's 69 years old. What are you, what are you making faces? I mean, <laughs> I, it, it's just weird to be talked about while you're in the same room and, and, <laughs> and, and, to be, and further to be called a toddler and talked about as if you're on death's door. I mean, uh, that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> the rare both. Okay, the, the point being, the point, this is the... A toddler this, on this, death's door. <laughs> this is the end of your career, you would agree, right? Like, that's, this is... Well, define end. I mean... Are, are you going to, are you ever going to retire? No. Are you, no, well, the, I, I, the Greg yeah. Cody show with Greg Cody's just taking off. Exactly right. right. Exactly. I just asked Greg what he was doing during the break. He was emailing someone at the Panthers for his credentials, set up an interview, of get everything course. ready for the season. He's never going to stop doing Things this. Things are happening, Dan. I got a new book coming out. I mean, I'm just getting started, Jack. <laughs> Come on now. That kind of thing. And you know it. I am just getting is. started. Getting my second wind. Oh, yeah. Starting it. Okay. Damn right. The, the point of all of this is I feel like, and perhaps I'm underestimating him, I feel like we are holding Greg Cody's hands for whatever it is that he wants to make of his 70s and union of his business and his journalistic might in this market. It's holding and, me back is more like it. Okay. An anchor on the, his career. Otherwise. <laughs> an anchor. Paul Anchor. Oh, my God. What a bad joke. <laughs> that what is a, a bad, bad one. What a bad joke. It was Thank a stretch, you. but I enjoyed it. They said Paul Anchor, <laughs> which I think is a reference to Paul Anka. It is, yeah. No, if you're a waiter. no, no. Yeah. It's worse Love than Paul that. Anka. No, look, look. <laughs> what a betrayal. You explained that joke that no one but me got. You explained because okay. I wish it was. I wish it was Paul Anka. I wi I dream for the comedic genius of Greg Cody being so musty old that he just makes a Paul Anka reference. No, this is a joke that he just made that only I would get. Yes, it was just for you, Dan. Only no yeah. one else and no one listening to this would get it except me. Explain right. to them the of that joke you just threw on us because uh, uh, you're a toddler in the <laughs> last parts of his career he made throwing, it just for you no, i mean throwing feces at us thoughtful you should yeah. thank him a I few mean, decades ago the miami herald had an executive sports editor named paul anger a-n-g-e-r uh, uh, and and he was great i love paul but he did not give me a column and then his successor was the one who gave me a column so the joke was uh, I should start calling Paul Anger Paul Anchor because uh, he did that, had that effect on my career. Love you, Paul, if you're listening. The Greg Cody Show featuring Greg Cody and With. his frustrated son, Fine. his frustrated son, Chris, because, Chris, you've already experienced this. Not only, this is the worst part of what I'm about to say. Not only have you experienced trying to take care of this toddler as he's entitled and narcissistic and the Greg Cody show featuring Greg Cody is totally out of control with a Fine. <laughs> a tribute and a celebration to his every whim. You just have to run and chase it whatever time he wants something. You have to go produce him. It's annoying because the world revolves around his podcast. It's true. I, 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 That's <laughs> easy money for Christopher, by it's the way. Not, he's not that well paid. Based on what he does, not, I not would by, say he is. No. Oh my God! Oh, here we go. Really? Oh my here God! Go. Really? He's no, doing charity. I'll take for a few you. weeks off if it'll he's make your doing, life he's easier. He's doing Chris, charity. Christopher for you. does a great job on the podcast. He, I'm just, Chris Cody. No, I'll be back in a month. Joking. I'll be back in a month. Joking. 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 Chris wow. Cody, you're doing charity for your father. I know what he pays you. It's the only payment I know in this whole damn company. <laughs> it's insulting what you're paying. No, it isn't insulting. I'm a small-time operation. 
you know, we're growing. Right. Mm -hmm. And thank you, listeners. You do what you can do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not a major. I don't have a fifty million dollar deal with a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a sports book. I <laughs> right. mean, I'm I'm a one man operation. Yeah. Well, three men. Well, that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, I sell a T-shirt now and then, make a little extra coin. You nice hat. You, nice if you want to do shirts. the pie chart of who does the most and the least on the Greg Cody show with Greg Cody, <laughs> you don't want to see that pie chart. Well, hold on a second. He's the star. Hold I mean, on a second. Twice. I have a, I have a bone to pick with Christopher here on Greg's behalf. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. Because I was, th I was thinking it. about this the other day. Just yesterday, as a matter of fact, I was thinking about this. So last week or the week before... Christopher chastised his father, Greg, for going on a cruise and not attending the Greg Cody show taping or something about the Dolphins-related thing. And he's like, how could you go on a cruise during football season? Then we show up to the office yesterday, look around, Christopher's not here. Where's Christopher? On a cruise. Yeah, I was on a cruise. This is what I was going to bring up, that the worst part of this is not only that he's underpaying you, it's that you're becoming him. Oh no! You are yeah. you are becoming, becoming right right in front of us. You're becoming. You a week ago you you excoriated your father, and you know it. <laughs> yeah, I gotta laugh. <laughs> Quit stealing my material, Brad. Bay. <laughs> Zagaki. All right. All my greatest hits. That's it. There's nothing else. That's, that's the treasure chest. So that's. Trailers for sale. <laughs> wait, wait. Room to, to let 50 cents. <laughs> I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was. <laughs> Back in my day. He's got one today. What? what? No, he doesn't. Wow. It's a Tuesday. It's on, Tuesday. On a quality control week. Yeah. He has got one, but I, I just need to stay here for a minute, for just a second, because Greg Cody, this person who brings in five catchphrases in a song and crushes it every week at the end of his career, <laughs> he comes in here every Tuesday, last one in on a meeting none of us want to be in. None of us have ever had meetings I didn't leave ESPN so we could have meetings. I enjoy them. You, you, you well, don't seem to happened? enjoy them. You're you the only don't. one that contributes less than you, Greg Cody. Yeah. You don't, yeah, okay, so Greg Cody comes Daily in. Daily document. My topics are right there. I mean, no, yeah, there's nothing. What he set it you up? You couldn't possibly be doing any less. <laughs> you come in here and you smoke in the garage. No one here wants to do meetings because the two of these are so great at what they do that they don't need meetings. Thank you have, you. They've mastered the craft so much that neither one of them needs to be talked to in a meeting about anything. Yeah. The look that my dad gives when Mike goes, Greg, you got anything? And the answer is always no. Offended. Yeah, always. Offended that I want to include him in a meeting. Because I, I submit my topics the that daily morning yeah. 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 okay but i would like to explore your topics so them I, out. Okay. I didn't know you were uh, the the ep today so i didn't include you on my uh, well you never had i okay. didn't know that you were so good and so on the it point, in such the, great the, the, form the, that you're Greg, beyond the, point, the meeting no, the, the, you do the the larger point is, and this is we yeah, finally you know we finally got into the truth and we do know it yeah. we finally do got to the <laughs> truth which is greg cody thinks he has mastered this craft <laughs> Greg Cody uh. thinks he has mastered this craft. He is so good at producing quality audio for people at a whim, farts it out, perpetually amusing his producers, don't do anything. He does all the work on the Greg Cody show featuring Greg Cody. With fun. Where his underpaid producers. I'm Greg, bitch. <laughs> Elton John? Make him look like a star. This person has mastered the craft so much that he doesn't need any meetings to talk about anything. Thank you. Ever. You're coming around now. I appreciate that. <laughs> Just show up and let it fly, Greg. Um, you yeah. know, yeah. It, it, extemporaneous is the way to go through life. Mm -hmm. Too much planning is uh, is a detriment. Yep. Are you ready for turn. back in my day? Is everyone ready for back in my day? I can't believe it's here. Look, he's winded already. He's winded from... <laughs> winded. Well, he's you, talked you, a lot you, this no, hour. You, you've talked a lot. He just got his second wind, <laughs> no, Greg, plenty of wind. Greg, Thank I, you, Billy. I, mm -hmm. I told him this morning, Greg, have you noticed, last week... <laughs> At the end of the show, you made a messy point that was gibberish, and then you said something no one understood. <laughs> you realize how tired you're getting at the end of these shows. It's making less and less sense what you drool into a microphone as you say, I'm just starting my career. 
<laughs> and now it is time to take a trip down memory lane. Here's your guy, Greg Cody, with Back in My Day. <laughs> Hotel housekeeping. <laughs> Hotel housekeeping. As we reflect on the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic, a time we now get to pretend to ourselves is all over, the changes it brought are pretty immense. It certainly deepened our political divide as half of America mourned the loss of a million lives while the other half called the whole thing a hoax, declined vaccines, and got kicked off planes for refusing to wear a mask. Fair to say it also greased the skids for those entangled by mental illness as antisocial behavior became all but mandated and those hanging onto reality by a thread sank further into untethered paranoia. On a lighter note, in many other ways, the effect of the pandemic is now seen in little things not profoundly important, yet still a jolt to what had been our accepted routine. Like hotel housekeeping, it largely went away and for the most part, it ain't a coming back, Jack. Major hotel chains tried to put it off as altruism at first, as if looking out for our health and safety back when social distancing was a thing and guests probably were just fine without the maid skipping uh, through the place with a, with a feather duster. Then things returned to normal, but hotels had gotten used to what those reduced house housekeeping staffs had done for their profit margin. Suddenly, the only real reason to stay in a hotel in the first place, despite the exorbitant cost, to have a maid, to feel pampered, to return from touristing to a pristine room, had been taken away. Now, you get that laminated card on the table that explains you can now have maid service, but only by special request, presumably if someone on the remaining skeletal staff is in the mood. Maid service was a part of the deal. You expected it. You returned to a welcoming, pillowy duvet, a neat stack of fresh towels standing sentry at the ready, the end of the toilet roll folded in a V for no apparent reason whatsoever other than to make me feel cared for. It was that little bit of uncommon luxury. Oh, you'd like an extra shampoo brought to your room? Right away, Mr. Coat. Hey, I'm easy to please. Two mints on a pillow, and I feel like a doggone king. Now, you feel guilty even asking for housekeeping, like little Lord Fauntleroy demanding a pedicure. Some chains now recommend you leave trash outside your door for pickup. What? Marriott's policy varies by property, but housekeeping is mostly by request now with rooms cleaned automatically only every sixth night. My hotel room after six days unattended would look like a team of frat boys had sardined in and during Mardi Gras. In my room after six days without maid service, you'd find bedding on the floor, towels scattered like shrapnel, pizza boxes in the bathtub, empty Miller Lite bottles arranged across the room in neat triangles like bowling pins, and a lamp inexplicably in the refrigerator. <laughs> Hotels, if I'm paying you $429 to sleep in your room for a night, the least you can do, literally, the least you can do is keep that room clean. I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was yeah. back in my and day. And that's why we keep him around, right there. <laughs> Look, <did>. despite uh, <laughs> his, his bitterness in meetings, because he can go to a hotel and demand that the maid treat him better. Damn God damn it. Right. This is Inu and an improved Dan Levatar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings. So I think I've reached maturity. Oh, wow. <laughs> really? really? Wow. When did Over that the weekend, happen? I went out, like we were talking last segment, I went on a cruise, a three day cruise, and for the first time in my life. Hold on a minute. So Tony goes into the forest. And he finds God. You go on a cruise and you find maturity. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, there was a three. It was three nights, three uh, possible nights for being debaucherous. Well, what? There's a bad start to you found maturity. No, no, no I know that's what I'm saying. Now my boy cook. Hold yeah, let me cook. Let yeah. me cook. But Chris, hold on. Before you go forward here, uh, if I said you went on the same cruise maybe seven, eight years ago, of those three nights, you're going out all three nights. I would go three, go hard every single possible okay. night of the cruise. Oh, yeah. And on Great this times. weekend, mm -hmm. for the first time ever. Just family thing with your daughter. This was not a family cruise. This was a friend's cruise, oh. no kids. Mm. So even more excuse to let loose yeah. this weekend. On Saturday, night two. You don't get a lot of these, do you? No. I went to bed at 1030. What? Wow. Well. Hold, hold on a hold second. On, but what hold happened during the day? Because yeah. I got hammered. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh but yeah. <laughs> Pool bar at Coco Cay. You were drunk. <laughs> right, that's you not couldn't go anymore. But you I could... got up intending to get 
to, to attack the night. No, right. And I went to dinner and I was like, I'm sleepy. So hold on. <laughs> That's <laughs> not maturity. That drinking is, no, all day. No, 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 no. That is you so drank to, You That's drank to failure. That's, I your, that's your engine kaputting. Old me no. would have pushed through. That's you being old. Because if you push through, you can get there. Chris, you, you, Chris, you told me about this before the show. I thought your family was with you. No, that's see, that's. I feel like if my kid was with me, that I that's more of an excuse to not go crazy. When I don't have my kid there, like there was nothing holding me back other than just maturity. But do you right. know what maturity is? Right. It's no, when you, it's when you think about consequences. I'm thinking about my health. I'm like, you know what? I got, I got to I, I don't want to get all. But you, you know, got I, too drunk during the day that your body couldn't support uh, that, your bad behavior at night. It wasn't maturity that's, that had you. That's make this speaking decision. from a guy who's never been to the pool bar, swim Coco K. Bar Coco K. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that on my bachelor party? I do, dangerous. yes. Oh, do Green I ever. That is a dangerous <laughs> I didn't go out that night either. Oh, I mean. Love Coco K. Oh. Perfect day, some well, say. Well, yeah. Chris, Chris, you learned from the Stamina King. I imagine your father on a cruise unrelenting from 6 p.m. I mean. to 3 a.m. That's the standard that I try to live no, up to. Crazy. St- no, but you're he goes, no. I've been on an eight-night cruise with him. He, doesn't, he never no, stops. You're, you grew up with DiMaggio of drunkenness. What are you doing? <laughs> Like your dad's a horse, <laughs> a I th- horse. I thought Mantle was the DiMaggio of drunkenness. <laughs> I moderate. Whoa, Lou Gehrig's the Iron Horse. You no, know, I was proud of myself. I think I imagine. Also disappointed. Woke up the next day. I was like, "Who are you? You're a failure." This is what I would guess, <laughs> what? and this, I would think this would be the difference between you and your dad. You correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if I have this identified correctly, but I sh- your dad strikes me as somebody who may drink from five or six p.m. till 1 a.m. and there ain't going to be any eating in there you might snarf a piece of pizza at the buffet on your way to 10 oh i'm eating snarf snarf a great word no, yeah, and yeah, so and yeah. now the carbs are going to get you in a way they're not your father has worked this marathon muscle it's nothing but fluid that's going through there for seven hours that's how i keep my figure He'll order pasta at dinner, and I'm then so there will be more pasta when he's done. Who did you go on this cruise with? My uh, friends, my adult friends that I've made. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. What adult kind friends? of friend? What friend what was that? You, you swinging? Now? That's yeah. That's something. Like what's, what's going on here? Roy, Roy, you have you haven't have made room? parent friends like in the last few years, like a new friend group that you've because Qu- of questions no. remain. Are you swinging now? <laughs> like at a school? Like these are school he parents? Was swinging. Or something? It was a dad's know. weekend. He met some friends with his wife. They go out for dinner once in a while, and it's like, hey, let's all go on a cruise for a weekend, and then switch our partners. If the shoe fits. A few years ago. Whoa. A few years ago, I was at a park with my kid and i met another dad and there can we've just connected and now i have a whole new group of friends what? parent friends billy mm. what you have not made like i said maturity billy you have not made adult friends no you have uh, you i have didn't t- make childhood friends <laughs> and we all <laughs> baby Free you want in on this, Greg? <laughs> no. I mean, that's uh, that's a shocking plot babe. twist. That's going to be in the Sueys next year wow. yeah. as a as a revelation. Finally, we unmask uh, that Chris Cody is a, is a If the shoe fits. Is a swinger. He said, if the I'm shoe, a chair swinger. Yeah, I mean, swinger. Wearing one shoe that fits. He's Swing swaggering it. to the room wearing only that. And now we're all left with the haunting <laughs> images of a confident Chris Cody. <laughs> Mature. Wearing <laughs> nothing but a chair, confident Chris a Cody. A single shoe yeah. that fits, wearing only a shoe that fits. That's why I was so tired. And so it's wait. not on his foot, by the way. It's on his dead. <laughs> the height of comedy, these two. <laughs> Uh, so you just met a guy at a park and now you're going cruises in here. Yeah, what? none of us are making adult friends. Mike has made adult friends. Tony is still on no, his No, 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 don't drag me in. I this. mean through your kids, though. <laughs> like through your kids. Like they, they, it was birthed by your kids playing at a park or somewhere. It's I'm on, I, No I, adult friends for me. Yeah. But like, a, this, like are these friends of like your kids' friends? Like parents of your kids' friends I've kind or something? Of, I've kind of joined... Th- the guy that I met at the park and his daughter, I've become good friends with him, and so he has brought me into his world. So now I'm like hanging this out. This sounds with all like that movie. It's honestly great. 
I love you, man. Like you just be, like we're looking for an adult friend that you became friends That's with. That's crazy. I haven't made a friend in thirty years. Roy's made friends. What a <laughs> no, great thing really. to put it on a t-shirt. I haven't made. Friends I haven't in 30 made years. a friend in thirty years. What's the point? I mean, <laughs> who said, needs more you know, friends? I mean, you said on. that as if it were you were proud of it. Oh, Roy you know, is. I'm made, not ashamed. I Roy mean, has made adult friends. Is Roy the only one around here who has made friends in adulthood? Nah, not really. Chris, and not, Roy. not really. No. I got enough friends. I'm good. Thanks. So Roy has not made it. Well, Chris has matured. I guess the rest. Of us haven't matured yet. Right. Maturity. But that so, so hammered on Saturday. Though. It does happen, Dan. You go out to the park with your kid. You go to Central Park. You put him on a swing, and then all of a sudden, you know, some other dads out there with their kid, and you know, are you Chris Cody from the Dan Lebitard show? Oh, did, I've been they, there. did he yeah. know you? Yeah, 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 yeah. He told me a few days later that he knew me. <laughs> oh, it was no. planted. Oh, it was a plant. Oh, no. yeah. Stalker. You've been Mark. trapped. When's he supposed to bust that out? Wait, to talk oh, to you about well, the show? Conversation Saturday night, one. I think, oh, was no, the plan. Yeah. No, He's dating for the wrong reasons. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a narcissist, though. I love it. Like your father, you excoriated him a week earlier for being gone on a cruise during a football season. I'm confused by this. Billy, you're delighted by no, it. No, 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 just, no. Well, first of all, if you think, if you remember back, I was saying, Dad, when you were on the cruise, I covered for you. It was the previous week that I was at the Dolphins game, and he criticized me for not being there Sunday, and then he wasn't available on that Sunday. He expects you to So I just said up. to him, hey, I covered you when you were on the cruise. I wasn't cr- crushing him for being on the well, cruise. Well, we had, you had made a plan to be on the show after the 70 to 20 right, We're getting game. bogged down. That again. was prematurity. Yeah, yeah right. that was prematurity. Mm-hmm. You got that right. It Not was Saturday, malfe- it, it was malfeasance, is what it was. So there was, there was did, none of that on Saturday. What does yeah. Sunday look like for mature Chris? <laughs> Can we have this out? Let's have it out on air. Your dad hasn't let go of it yet. He hasn't let go of it. We oh, were I try- was furious. No, no, you're still furious. Well, I n- never got a proper apology, to be honest with you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, well, he dragged the show. Uh, Chris. I'm not doing this again. Chris. <laughs> Just say sorry. It's over. I did say sorry. Oh, be the man. bigger person. I mean, you're mature. Well, it's not over. It was an equivocal sorry. You're Let's mature now, way. Chris. Do was it right. He didn't like the well, sorry? Mm-hmm. It was one of those, sorry if I disappointed you. Well, I'm sorry you disappointed me, too. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm past it. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Yeah, you seem past it's it. It's water mm-hmm. under the bridge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so annoyed with you. Wait, no, you're mature now. That's yeah, right. Greg, two weeks ago you said you weren't yourself and you were terrible because you spent the whole show seething at what a bad producer right. your son had been, your underpaid son, who doesn't think that he has to work Sunday nights when he's getting drunk at the Dolphin game. Correct. I learned it from you, Dad. I learned it from you. Uh, well, I was covering that Dolphin game. Just saying, drinking on a Sunday Dolphin football, his dad has made his career around that. Your son didn't want to work that night. I don't want to drag this into the mud, but you already have. Uh, first of all, I never drink on the job. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. Yeah, but your son doesn't think he works for you on Sunday night, every Sunday night. Well, that's not the terms of the deal for what you're paying him. You're not paying him enough to be available to, at your every whim. Well, says who? It says the numbers. Says Chris, I guess. You have All a right. success. Again. You have a successful <laughs> podcast. I'm a small time operation. I'm yeah. a one man yep. show. Mm-hmm. Said that already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, I mean, it's got it's your true. name twice on it. You're not a one man operation. It's the Greg Cody Show featuring Greg Cody. Well, with, with but yeah, you know the same person on both sides of that uh, name. So that kind of thing. I think uh, it's a one man show. Oh Yeti and I will take a couple weeks off, and you can handle it. <laughs> you know. I'm, oh my I'm, God! I'm, please, I, I will no. do what I have to. You know what? No, Chris, we'll take, off, we'll take, we'll take off, we'll fuck each other's wives, Whoa! and then we'll be back in a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. You and Yeti or you and Greg? Whoa, if the, sh- if the shoe fits. <laughs> well, if the shoe fits. <laughs> Wait a minute. Damn it, Billy. <laughs> he cornered you. <laughs> Chris, please, I would like, please, I would like a post-swinger show reveal of what that show would sound like if you and Yeti did nothing and just let your dad do the podcast. It the wouldn't way he get wants recorded. It to. No. <laughs> <laughs> it would be him talking with his computer off into right. his mic. I'd forget to press record. Mm-hmm. No, you, you need to you need to show your father how little he actually does on his own podcast while starring on it. I think he could record it, but then how would what would how would you post it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I'm not a producer. Right. I'm a talent. It's your job. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And, of course, he's literally looking at the podcast numbers on his screen right now. Yeah. No, I, I, well, that's true. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I get that off the screen. <laughs> Greg, Greg.
Greg. How's what, it doing? What are you, what are you good. doing, Greg, Greg? I know. Greg. Sorry. It just happened to be on the screen. Greg, it always <laughs> looking is. looking at it. Uh, it <laughs> always is, Greg. Uh, Greg, really? Greg. No, I just, you know. Uh. It just yeah. happened to be on the screen. I wasn't looking at it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who can blame me if I was, but right. I wasn't. Greg, you can't be doing the show with us and constantly refreshing your podcast numbers. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm researching things that might come up on the show. Yeah. Right. You know how that goes. I mean, on I'm megaphone? Always, I'm always, well, I'm always working things. Yeah. You know, I got Google search mm -hmm. happening. And, <laughs> you know, I'm looking up he's stuff. Right. I'm yeah, verifying. Right. How old is Jason Taylor? I'm on it, you know, 49. You know, I'm, I'm full of information. That was three mm -hmm. segments ago. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm confirming it. I'm a the journalist. I'm confirming Jason Taylor is 49, four years younger than Mario Cristobal. This is a new and unimproved Dan Levitar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings.